Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep this relatively short, but I just watched the House series finale. Um, something I have been wondering about uh, for several years now, how they were gonna end it, and it always seemed clear to me that they were gonna kill him in the end. And it's not something I wanted to see, but, you know, I sort of put it out of my mind because I didn't want to think about the show ending, but it's finally here, and... I guess I've got to talk about it. I'm decked out in my Cameron outfit, which... Yeah, that's better. Um, for many years, my most of my wardrobe was completely inspired by Cameron, so... Yeah, these are kind of some of the leftovers. I don't really wear stuff like this much anymore. Um, let's start with the retrospective that aired first. I liked it. Um, it seemed pretty disjointed. It had a very casual home movie feel, which maybe that was the point. Um, it, it wasn't like a, a narrative or a chronological, I guess, about how the show started and the casting and the writing and blah 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 the way most things like that go. Um, it was very much about sort of giving credit to the uh, the crew, actually, a lot of it. they Hugh Laurie, I should say, went out of his way to sort of you know, talk about the makeup people, the wardrobe, the sets, the craft service people, and that was really, really cool of him. You know, I, I really thought that sort of showed who he is, you know, and how much he appreciates everyone who put in so much work to the show. I really do I really do have a lot of respect for Hugh Laurie and wish him and all the cast nothing but the best after this. So I enjoyed the retrospective. It was fun. Uh, I liked seeing Jennifer Morrison back. Um, She's somebody who was treated very badly by the people in charge, in my opinion. I don't know exactly what went down, but from the looks of things, she was treated very badly, and I think she handled the whole thing with a lot of class, and um, I'm a big fan of Once Upon a Time now, so it was really cool to see her back talking with Hugh, and good that there are no hard feelings between the two of them. And uh, the some of the... Some of the uh, interview segments, I, I kind of think were old, because they had one teeny tiny segment with Lisa Edelstein, and, but th that's it. She wasn't in the, the show or any other part of the retrospective, so I kind of feel like that was filmed a while ago. I don't know why she would show up just to do that one little bit. Um, but the ending of that was perfect with uh, Hugh and Robert Sean Leonard doing their little paintball thing. I, I really enjoyed that with... Hugh Laurie shooting himself in the foot at the end. That was... Those are my boys. Uh, for about three years, this show was the show for me. The, my TV life revolved around from seasons three to five. It's all I cared about. I did not watch season seven at all because I can't stand the Huddy relationship. Cannot stand it. And I thought, why would I put myself through that? Why do it? So I didn't. And uh, so that's why I was glad that she was gone this year. I don't know the specifics of that either. I'm guessing she wanted more money than they were willing to give her. Either way, she was gone and I got to watch again this year. So the... I'm getting way off track again. The retrospective was good. I enjoyed it. Now onto the actual episode. Of course, here's when you get nervous. Um, it starts out... It, it sort of started out like um, House's head, where House is just in this weird situation and we are in his head, you know, he's hallucinating all these things, and there's flashbacks, and that's very, very frustrating. And, wow, literally everyone but Lisa Edelstein came back. I guess Tritter and Vulgar, but... Or, sorry, Vogler. I don't remember, that arc was stupid. But everyone else came back. Amber Tamlin showed up to give, like, a line at the end. Um, what's his name? The therapist whatever, Dr. Nolan, I can't remember the actor's name right now, he came back to do one teeny scene. It's like, wow. Um, yeah, and some of these people we didn't know about, like, we didn't know that Celia Ward was going to be in it, which was kind of cool, even though I'm not a big Stacey fan. Um, did not know that Andy Deck was going to be in it, which I was thrilled as soon as I heard her. I'm like, Amber! Yay! I, I love Amber. Season four is my favorite season of the show. It's amazing and she's amazing and it was really great to see her one last time. It was good seeing Cal Penn again too and um, yeah the Stacy thing was was odd when he was hallucinating her 
And that, I mean, it seemed right because she was a big part of his life, but the show has basically ignored her existence since about season three. I mean, once Huddy started to take over, it was Cuddy. Cuddy, Cuddy, Cuddy has been the love of his life forever. They had a one night stand in college and he never got over it. It really made it seem like Stacy was nothing. I'm like, that's one of the things that bugged me about the Cuddy arc is the just rewriting their history. Um, but for one horrifying moment, I thought that in, during the hallucinations that Stacy really had given birth to House's baby and I was like, oh dear God, no. But luckily that was just a what if. Although, when he looked over at the couch, was that Lisa Edelstein there? I couldn't tell. It would seem odd if it was, but if anyone knows for sure, tell me. Um, yeah, I was really tense and nervous at the beginning because there was a lot of focus on the patient, a lot of setup, blah, blah, blah. I didn't care about the patients. Like, this is the last episode ever. I want to know what's going to happen to these people that I care about, you know? I don't care about some patient. And I really don't, I really don't care to hear more of House's inner ramblings about life and truth and the, the afterlife or the absence of an afterlife. It's like, come on, give me something a little new to work with. Wilson's dying. Okay, that's what I'm worried about. Wilson's dying. How are you going to wrap that up? Um, I thought Cameron's hallucination, or him hallucinating Cameron was interesting. I can't, she was the only one that didn't argue for him to, to live. She was telling him to let go and to die. That's not, that, I thought that was a strange person to have say that, and I'm not sure what that says about how he sees her, because she is always someone who challenged him, always someone who fought him. Every step of the way, she was fighting him, trying to make him be better, or what she thought was better. And so for her to say, oh, just let go, just give up, I thought that was an odd choice. But, you know, whatever. Um, when, they, when they got to the, uh, the death, I was like, not buying it not buying it. Nope. You can't fool me. I don't believe it. Because I always figured if they were going to actually have House die, it would it would be more dramatic than that, you know? It would literally end on him dying somehow. Um, and I just didn't believe it. Mostly because there has been a lot of speculation that exactly what did happen would happen. So I was holding on to that as sort of a, a, a one last Sherlock Holmes parallel. So I was holding on to that, and they released the pictures of the uh, uh, second to last scene with Wilson, and that hadn't come up yet, and I'm like, I don't buy it. That scene hasn't happened yet. I don't buy it. And and when I got to the funeral, I'm like, uh-uh, no way. The only time I started to doubt was when Foreman said the coroner confirmed that it was him, and I'm like, oh, how'd you do that? Did you literally, did you... Did you pull a whole nine yards and switch your teeth out with the dead guy? Because he was going to take the fall for you earlier. I don't know. But they never quite resolved that, did they? But, again, I don't care about the patient. And But when Wilson's phone went off, I'm like, ha, ha, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, God, the ending was perfect. I, I was crying. I was tearing up a little at the end. It was perfect, and I was so scared it wouldn't be. Most series finales do not work out in my favor, and David Shore seems a little out of touch with his audience because he seemed genuinely surprised at how angry people were last year when House crashed his car through Cuddy's house, which I did watch that episode because everyone was talking about it. And I'm like, really? You don't, you don't get why people are mad? It's coming from someone who didn't like Cuddy or their relationship at all, and come on, dude. You seriously don't get why that's a problem. You don't get why that's a big deal. So because he didn't gauge the fans' reaction to that quite right, I was worried the same thing would happen here, and what he thought would be uplifting, or maybe it was he, Lori, who said uplifting, wouldn't be. So when it ended with showing everyone going on with their lives, and House and Wilson literally riding off into the sunset, well, not the sunset, but you know what I mean, I was like, thank God. Oh, perfect. Pitch perfect. I could not have asked for a more perfect ending. And Chase taking over as the department head, that's been a long, long time coming. I was a little disappointed that Cameron appeared to be remarried with a kid. I, I did ship her with Chase, and I, don't know, I guess part of me was hoping they'd reunite, but then I also kind of liked his relationship with Park this year that also didn't really wrap up in any way. 
but it's fine. You know, if she's happy and he's happy, it's it's fine. Just wasn't meant to be, I guess. But, and the music they play during that montage of everybody's lives, again, perfect. And the song at the end, if I'm not mistaken, it's a song that Amber sang when he was hallucinating her in the episode Under My Skin. Only she did it very creepy, and here it was played as, as a good thing, you know? And it it was what they said it was. It was not quite an ending. I mean, it was an ending for House because he can't go back to his life now. He can't ever go back to his life. It makes me wonder, what's he going to do once those five months are up and Wilson's gone? Because Wilson is going to die, and a House can't go home, you know? And to me, that is the biggest gesture he could make, even after everything he's done for Wilson. And he has done a lot. Giving up his whole life to spend Wilson's last five months with him. That was amazing. That said it all. So, yeah, I loved it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm so, so glad it was perfect. And, you know, thanks. Thanks for a great eight years. Or a great seven years, I guess, for me, since, again didn't really watch season 7, and I don't intend to. But other than that, thanks for a great series. David Shore, Hugh Laurie, Robert Sean Leonard, everyone else, but you three in particular, thank you. Thank you.